Hey guys, thank you for watching and welcome to the video. Uh, in this video, we'll be reviewing the HPB Con and comparing it to the Truth Ears Zero, the Kiwi Ears Cadenza, and the Eco OH10, which are all great options at their various price points. I'll be talking about how these line up value-wise and how the Con sounds. Uh, different IEMs sound better or worse in certain genres, so we'll talk about how each compares listening to different music. At the end, I'll let you know which one I think is the best value for your money. If you're new, welcome to the channel. Uh, my name is Jeremy and I created this channel to give honest reviews on audio equipment. I do a lot of IEM reviews, but also do reviews on DACs, amps, headphones, and other audio equipment, always with an eye towards value. I also post how-to videos as well, if I think there's something I can do to be helpful. Uh, if there's anything at all you have questions about, uh, whether it's related to the video or not, uh, please leave your questions below. Or feel free to leave a comment to just say hi, I really do appreciate everyone who watches these videos, and I'd love to hear from you. Okay, let's get started. Uh, over the last few years, HBB has collaborated on some great IEMs. Uh, the first set I bought for family gifts after getting into this hobby was the Melee. Uh, when the Olina came out, it was my favorite IEM around $100, uh, especially for vocals. After you toned down the treble a bit uh, with a filter modification, which was basically just using an extra filter that they included in the box uh, that you could add to the IEM so that the treble wasn't quite as sizzly. The QKZ HBB collab is another great option. Um, it's around $20, and it was one of the first IEMs I had listened to in that price bracket that actually gave you a reasonably tamed upper mid-range, which I think is something that he's been going for from the beginning, uh, but hoping to be able to do that in a way where you still get some energy there. And I'm very happy with that as an option at that price point. It's a bass heavy IEM, but it doesn't give you that sharp treble a lot of those V-shaped IEMs in this price range have. The Kai I wasn't a very big fan of, as I felt it needed more power than what you can get with like an Apple dongle to get the most out of it, which made it a no-go for me, uh, but if you do have sufficient power, it does sound great. Um, I've bought all these with my own money, and aside from the Kai, I've always felt that my money was well spent. Um, I think HBB has learned a lot uh, from his mistakes, culminating in the QKZ Con. It has excellent tuning and a unique, clear sound that's very pleasing to the ear, and it works especially well for rock and uh, other bass and guitar heavy genres. I wouldn't buy it for instrumental and female vocalist specific listening, but for those into pop, rap, and rock, it's great. On uh, this review, we'll compare it to some of the best options in the IEM value segment, and I'll let you know whether it's worth your money. First, just to get it out of the way, as far as I can tell, QKZ and KZ are related companies. QKZ mentions KZ on their website. It doesn't really matter to me. Just thought I should pass it along. For those of you that know about the drama a few months ago, HBB had a set and there was something about the cables not being connected and a little uproar over that and I don't really know all the details you can probably go back and find other videos from other people if you want to get up to speed on that but there was some issue with KZ as a company and QKZ appears to be at least related in some kind of way unless there's another KZ company that I'm not familiar of. What that means, I'm not quite sure, but I did find it interesting given the history of these companies and HBB. So moving on, let's compare these IEMs. We'll compare them based on build quality, including cable and tip quality, uh, power requirements, and the most important thing, of course, sound quality which includes imaging, soundstage, bass, instrument separation, upper mid-range and treble performance, especially for female vocals, and gaming performance. Uh, for the female vocals, the reason why I want to especially concentrate there is that that upper mid-range is an area that some IEMs really struggle with, and it can be very piercing, and uh, I call it stabby, um, if you don't have the right set. So, although male performance in the vocals tends to usually be pretty good. Female vocals can be pretty hit or miss on a lot of IEMs. We'll also go over what types of music work best for each IEM. Um, so let's start with uh, build quality. The Truthier Zero 
It doesn't have a great cable that comes with it, and it has bad tips. I have larger ear canals, and it would not fit my ears, so that was not a good thing. Um, so you will need to look at uh, replacing that when you purchase it, or you may not. You may be just fine with it, but for me, that was an additional cost. So something to keep in mind, it's $50 plus your, for me, I was looking at another cable and different tips uh, to use with it. It has a plastic casing. So although the pattern is really nice on it, it's a very cheap feeling IEM. Uh, for the Kiwi Ears Cadenza, it's still plasticky, but I like the nice marbled uh, look that you get with it. It's slightly more than I like it on the Truth Ears Zero. Uh, it has a usable cable and uh, the tips that came with them, I was able to use even with my larger ear canals. So that added a lot of value. Um, with the QKZ Con, you get usable tips. So all of my testing here, I've used with the included tips, which is awesome. And uh, the cable is very similar to what you get with the Eco OH-10. So it's a very high quality cable in comparison to what you get with a lot of other companies. Uh, the metallic case feels really high quality too. So it's a very similar shape to what you get on a lot of the KZs uh, that are very plasticky, but this is actually like a metallic finish that feels very high quality. Um, so it's very, very good quality for a $40 IEM. Um, just to give you a sense of where we're at in the middle of the range. So we're talking some cheap IEMs, but we're also going to talk about a, a way more expensive one that I really enjoy, which is the Eco OH-10. Um, you get a sense of heft with it and quality that you really don't get with the others. Although the cable is similar, the casing is in a completely other ballpark. It feels almost like you're holding two polished stones. They're not crazy heavy, but you get that sense of heft and quality uh, from them when you hold them. So you can definitely tell by looking at them that these would be the most expensive option. Um, I did replace the included tips on those with foam tips uh, because the upper mid range on these does bother me sometimes. In terms of power, um, all of these options work just fine um, with an American version of the Apple dongle. Um, from what I understand, it's higher powered than the European version though. So your mileage may vary if that's your only option is getting a lower powered version of it. All right, let's talk about sound quality. Uh, the Truth Ears Zero gives you a nice balance. Uh, it gives you a really strong bass while still giving you some airy presence in the upper ranges, which makes it a good option if you want to listen to a little bit of everything. It offers a good sense of instrument separation and instrument location. The Kiwi Ears Cadenza, I think, has the best sound stage of the bunch. Uh, listening to live music like Modest Yahoo's King Without a Crown uh, from the first Live at Stubbs album, you get a great sense of openness and airiness which makes you feel like you're in the middle of the music. Uh, instruments do sound a little fuzzy though. You have less clarity and detail than you have on some of the other options, um, but it, it's a really good balance and still sounds great. The QKZ Con does offer excellent sense of instrument separation and instrument detail, but not a great sense of instrument placement on the stage or much width. Uh, everything feels pretty close, but the clarity of the instruments makes up for the loss of soundstage. The Eco OH-10. The Eco has excellent instrument separation and placement, but not especially wide soundstage. It does a great job keeping up with detailed and fast tracks, but doesn't blow away the other options in this category in other senses. The Truth Ears Zero gives an excellent feeling of sub bass, but I don't hear the level of detail in the upper bass and mid bass that I would like. So although you hear that sub bass, you don't get quite as much punch as you would with something like the QKZ Con. The Kiwi Ears Cadenza has surprisingly good sub bass when it's called uh, to hit those low notes in certain tracks, but it doesn't offer the punch I'd like in a typical rock or pop song. It makes up for it by being so well-rounded for different genres, but if you're into bass-heavy music, this isn't the IEM for you. Uh, the QKZ Con has my favorite bass out of all of these. Excellent sub-bass, but also really punchy mid-bass that works well for everything. The Eco OH-10. I still enjoy the bass in these, but I don't find it to be bass-heavy, like some others have said. It offers a good punch, but if anything, the Con offers a richer, bigger bass to my ears. Maybe it's just starting to show its age at this point. All right, let's talk about female vocals and upper mid-range performance. 
Uh, for this, I listen to Joni Mitchell, uh, which can be very fatiguing on the wrong set. For the truthier zero, between the twang of the guitar and the high notes in Joni Mitchell's voice, it can feel a bit metallic and stabby, uh, even with spin fit CP100 plus tips, uh, which to my ears usually tame that upper region well uh, in most IMs. I had the same issue with the 7 hertz zeros. Even though they're great IMs for the price, the upper mid ranges could be piercing to my ears. And I think that's something that just for my ears versus the way that Critical tunes these, um, I, I think he must just hear things a little bit differently because for whatever reason, for my ears, when I listen to critical tuned IEMs, I almost always have an issue of a slightly metallic feeling in the upper mid range, and it also tends to be a little bit piercing for my ears. The Q ears cadenza verges on being fatiguing uh, when she hits those high notes, but they're a lot more comfortable in those ranges than you get on the zero. Um, it also offers an almost holographic feel to her voice, uh, which I found really cool, which really put it out front and center with the different instruments kind of surrounding it, which was a really cool sound. And just in general, uh, makes it really good for vocal performances. For the QKZ Con, one of my favorite things about this set is the bass is tuned so well, but the vocals still are very crisp and clean while not surpassing my threshold for fatigue. So I guess what I'm saying is this is... I don't know that I've heard another IEM that does such a good job of giving you sub bass and mid bass while also giving you crisp and clean instruments and vocals while keeping those vocals from being too much. So many IEMs, if they have a lot of bass and they want you to get that upper mid range in trouble, they way overdo that area. So it ends up being very fatiguing. You end up with a lot of bass and a very sharp amount of upper mid range in trouble. And these do an excellent job of keeping a, a balance between the two of them. So it sounds clean and energetic without being overwhelming, uh, which is awesome. And uh, bravo to HBB for that. Um, the Eco OH10, even with foam tips, the upper mid-range can still peak a bit and be uncomfortable. So even though I love these IEMs, you can see how far tuning has come in the last couple of years. Let's talk about gaming performance. I surprisingly love the Truth Era Zero for gaming. Uh, something about the bass impact and the airiness uh, makes it a great option during games. It has good imaging and overall makes it very fun to play with. Uh, the Cadenza was also a very good option and slightly behind the zero for me. Um, it doesn't have quite the bass impact and the fuzziness leads to a little bit of vagueness on the soundstage, but overall it's still really good too. Uh, the OH-10 for me is amazing and it even scared me a few times when enemies came up to me. It may not have the largest soundstage, but it does have great imaging and presence, which makes it great for gaming. Unfortunately, this is the one area that the con does not do great with. It was the worst of the bunch here. Uh, it doesn't sound great for gaming and the lack of soundstage and placement uh, gives it a vague experience for gaming. It does have good bass though, if that's the most important thing to you. And just overall, nothing is very specific in where it is. Um, you don't get great idea of how far it is. It, it's just overall, it's just very vague. It, it almost feels, you know, almost like a, a stereo experience. There's no, there's no detail. There's no depth. There's no any of that with gaming. It's very hard to use it uh, for gaming. I'm sure watching TV shows, things like that would be fine. But anything other than that, I... I wouldn't use it if you're, especially if you're looking at specifically for gaming. Regardless of whatever is going on with QKZ and KZ, the Con is one of my favorite IEMs. It isn't going to give you the best sense of soundstage and imaging, so if that's your thing, they probably aren't for you. But if you like pop, rock, rap, stuff like that, and really enjoy strong bass, but would also like crispy and clear vocals and instruments to go along with it without the fatigue that you get in so many other sets, I think you'll really love these. Um, I'd recommend them over the Truth or Zero, unless you really want a little bit more soundstage in your listening. Uh, they're an amazing value. They're 40 instead of the 50 bucks of the Truth or Zero, and you don't have to look at replacing the cable or the tips. So from that standpoint, I think they're a great value. They show you 
how far the hobby has come, I think, in the last couple of years. I think all in all, for popular music listening, they're one of the best options I've listened to regardless of the price. So that's my review. I hope you guys enjoyed. If there's anything that I can do to help you in any way, please leave a comment below. Please leave a comment below anyway. Uh, please like the video if you don't mind. It really helps me. Uh, subscribe to the channel. Anything that you do to help me is always greatly appreciated. And also, if I can help you in some way, please leave a comment below. So thank you so much for watching, and I hope you guys have a great day.